Good day. My name is Rory Kagan, and you are watching Grow Like a Super Pro. In today's episode, we will be discussing the topic of clothing. So today, we're going to be discussing cloning. We're going to teach you everything that you need to know, maybe some things you don't. So, where should we start? How about with, what is cloning? In biology, cloning is defined as the process of producing similar populations of genetically identical individuals that occurs in nature when organisms such as bacteria, insects, or plants reproduce asexually. For our purposes, what does that mean? It basically means that we're going to be making an exact replica of an existing plant. We've had this capability in the horticultural world for hundreds of years, long before we had the capability of doing it with sheep. Cloning represents a great deal of benefits for us as growers. We can be guaranteed of the plant's attributes, health, strength, quality, and yield because we've grown this plant before. Germinating represents a little bit of the roll of the dice since not all seeds are created equally, so we just don't know what we're going to get. In addition, cloning allows us to skip germinating altogether, which can prove time consuming and frustrating, and as I just mentioned, offers no guarantee of plant attributes. Now there are certain drawbacks to cloning as well, mostly in soil applications. A newly germinated seed will send a taproot deep into the soil typically to find a nice water source. This taproot then sends roots out laterally, forming a nice stable and strong structure for that developing plant on top. Clone plants do not send down a taproot. They only send out roots laterally, so it's just not quite as stabilized and may have trouble finding water. Luckily for us, in a superponic hydroponic system, this isn't a factor because the water is right there in the reservoir and the mediums provided in the system already provide great stabilization for that plant. Cloning is some next level stuff. So please understand it is not necessary to get yourself great results. If you're new to growing, perhaps it would be best to leave cloning out for a cycle or two as you get acclimated to your system and all its moving parts. Once you've mastered the basic operation, it might be time to try your hand at this tricky science. Clones can be taken off of plants in any stage of growth all the way through harvest. However, clones taken from flowering on will take far longer to root and become productive. So, clones are best taken off plants in their vegetative state. There's one of two ways to do this. We can maintain a mother plant, mother! which is basically a plant that's kept in a perpetual vegetative state. All of our clones will be clipped off of this healthy plant. The other way is to clip a few clones off of all of our existing vegetative plants and get them started in an alternative system while we're maturing those plants. What we would then do is grow those plants to the vegetative stage, take a few clones off of them, and repeat the process. Now, some would argue that over time this will represent a degradation in quality, but in all my years of growing, I've never had this be the case. It seems like time after time, cycle after cycle, I still get that great quality and flavor. Mother! When selecting a mother plant, we're looking for the best of the bunch. We really want to use the strongest performing vegetative plant that we have in our group. We want nice green growth and a robust and bushy plant. We also want to keep her this way, so it's very important that we pamper our mama and give her an ideal growing environment. We also need to make sure that we don't over prune or over clone her because that would affect our future cycles. Even if you're growing hydroponically, you might want to consider keeping your mother in soil. Hydroponics is fantastic for taking your plants from seed or clone straight to the harvest and speeding up all those stages in between. However, if you're going to keep a plant in perpetual vegetation, it may represent a little bit more maintenance than you'd find with soil, with the reservoir changes and things of that nature. So it might be a good idea to make your mother soil bound. Theoretically, we can keep a mother plant around for many, many moons. However, the typical lifespan is about a year. After this amount of time has elapsed, we can easily clip a clone from this plant and have that baby grow into our new mama. Some reasons for doing this would be if the mother plant becomes too unruly or outgrows her space, or is the unfortunate victim of a fungus, mold, or pest infestation. It's far easier to treat a clone for these ailments than it is an entire plant. All right, let's get to the fun stuff, actually cloning. 
we're going to need to gather our supplies, which are the following. A sharp cutting instrument, either scissors or a razor blade, alcohol or hydrogen peroxide for sterilizing, a cloning gel, a medium, there's a lot of suitable mediums out there, although we prefer rock wool for its ability to promote very fast rooting, and a cloning system. A lot of choices for cloning systems out there as well, but we certainly prefer Super Closet Super Cloners. They give your developing clones everything they need at this sensitive stage of growth. The first step will be to sterilize ourselves and our equipment, as the new clippings are extremely vulnerable to infection, so it's very important that everything remains as clean as possible. Also, when sterilizing your equipment, be careful. Razor blades are sharp. The next step will be to condition our medium. We will do this in the same way that we have in previous episodes. Now we are ready to cut, but where to cut? The strongest clones will come from the top or near the top of the vegetative plant. We want to clip at a 45 degree angle below internodal growth. This is where the clipping will focus its new growth. In addition, we would like to have three to four medium-sized leaves on the clipping to absorb light. We also want to make sure we have enough stem available to extend down into the rock wool cube. If your clipping has more than the three to four leaves recommended, you can clip them at the base. This will create an open node. If you have an open node that will extend down into the rock wool cube, it's very favorable because these locations tend to create roots faster than the area you just cut. If not, don't fret, the cut area will still produce roots, just not quite as quickly. This is our intended clipping location. You can see that we have nice branching and growth below this point and internodal growth above, making it an ideal place to clip. We will now dip our fresh clippings into the cloning gel. This serves two purposes. One, it coats that cut area in rooting hormones that will facilitate great root growth and it protects that cut area from problems such as embolisms or air bubbles that would cause the clone to fail. Set your clones into the rock wool cubes and secure them in place while compressing the rock wool as little as possible. These clones have a bit too much foliage. We want to leave just enough leaf so that the plant can absorb light. So we'll cut the majority of this off. This serves two purposes. One, it allows the plant to focus its energy where we want it at the developing roots and keeps the plant from transpiring too much, which may cause it to lose excessive water. Set your clones in your cloning system. In this example, we're using the Super Cloner 14. Make sure the water level is close to, if not touching the bottom of the net cups. When the oxygen bubbles pop on the surface of the water, they'll effectively moisten the rock wool cube. This is very important because your clones don't yet have a root system and they have a limited ability to absorb water. For this very reason, we also recommend using a foliar spray at this stage of growth. Since plants can absorb water and nutrients through their leaves, a daily spray of a nutrient-rich water solution will do wonders in making sure your clones have what they need to succeed. There are a lot of cloning-oriented nutrients available in the marketplace. As we've mentioned, we prefer to use the Technoflora Recipe for Success, which comes with the Thrive Alive B1 Green Foliar Spray. This, mixed with water, will be suitable feeding for your plants for their first three days of growth. After this time, you can add the Route 66, Thrive Alive B1 Red, and Sugar Daddy to your reservoir to facilitate great new growth in a nice, strong, hardy root structure. These nutrients should be used in accordance with the directions that come with the kit. Your developing clones prefer higher temps anywhere from 80 to 85 degrees and much higher humidity, about 75 to 85 percent. The water temperature should be a bit higher than room temp at about 70 to 75 degrees. Your developing clones do not have significant lighting requirements, so you can get away with using compact fluorescent lighting. We like to use T5 light strips in our super closet systems. These can be set anywhere from 18 to 24 hours of light for effective cloning. Your new clone should start to show roots after about four to 10 days, although sometimes it can take as long as two weeks. Once you see roots emerging from the rock wool cube and new growth starting up top, you know that you have cloned successfully. Well, all right, we just took a very comprehensive look at cloning. You now should have the skills to be proficient at this next level operation. Now you know, or now you grow!
and growing is half the battle. G.I. Grow. Tune in next time when we discuss flowering.